day that you eat of that fruit, your eyes will be opened and you'll be just like God. Well, the eyes being open part was true, uh, but being like God was not true. That was a lie right out of the devil's hell, and, and the old devil's a liar, and he's always been, he always will be. And the Bible said when they ate of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which God had instructed them, do not eat of it, because the day you eat thereof, you'll surely die. And of course, Satan said, well, you're not going to die. The Lord uh, just is withholding something good from you. Well, uh, Eve had a decision to make, either believe what God said or believe what the devil said. And unfortunately, she believed what the devil said, and she ate of that fruit of the tree. And the Bible said she gave to her husband Adam also, and he ate, and their eyes were opened, and sin entered the human race, and the fellowship that God had had with man was severed. It was broken right there because God and, and sin just, just don't come together. Man become a sinful person, and uh, it, it broke that fellowship, that bond that they had. And uh, so there had to be something that was done to restore that broken fellowship. Well, Jesus is that, and I don't want to use this in the wrong sense, but Jesus is that something, if you would. Uh, Jesus, when he died on the cross, what sin had done in destroying our fellowship, Jesus bridged that back together and now because of Christ, you and I can have a right relationship and we can be in complete fellowship with our Heavenly Father. Aren't you glad for Calvary? Aren't you glad for the blood? Aren't you glad for the cross? Aren't you glad for what Jesus has done for you and I? I'll tell you I am this evening and I believe that you are too if you stop and just think about it for a few minutes. Well, Good to be with you again this afternoon. Hope you had a good afternoon. I come in this evening and the fellow said, you get a nap? I said, no, I got about an hour and a half. I guess that's a sleep. That wasn't a nap. And I said, I got up, felt good, felt refreshed, and good to be back with you this afternoon. Wish you were here. I, I, I really do. I wish their pews were just full of people, but because of all that's going on. Of course, our Sunday night service and our Wednesday night service go gone virtual anyway. On this strictly on Facebook, we're having in-person morning services. But what's this been? Three, is this the third Sunday now that we've been out of church due to weather? And uh, some uh, I don't know who mentioned it this morning, but it seems like about every Friday or Saturday here for the last little while, We've had these snows to come through, and it's it's uh, uh, changed our our way of, of meeting even on Sunday morning, and we've had to do it strictly by Facebook, hopefully and prayerfully. And Gary was telling me this morning, I believe it was, that uh, they're calling for snow again, even maybe tonight, tomorrow, and then Friday night. And I went home and I looked, and uh, and I, I don't know, he must be a false prophet. I couldn't find it. I looked for it. I hope, I hope and pray he's wrong. I, I've done got him going to going to the phone. He's going to look at AccuWeather here now and find out if I'm I'm correct. But it wasn't on mine. At least they didn't seem to be calling for any. So I hope and pray that it won't be any come through on Friday or Saturday, and I'll get to see your faces. Now I, I, I've got talked to a few of you on the phone. I, and uh, those of you that have been sick in the last little while and and tried to. Uh, get in touch with you, but as far as seeing you in person here in the church and us worshiping together, I, I haven't seen you for a while, and uh, look, I hope and pray we can get together Sunday morning and look forward to seeing you here in the house of the Lord, but it's good to be able to come to where you're at today, this evening, right there in your house or wherever that you might be, and some of you may have gathered together uh, and listened to the service tonight, and whichever way that that you have chosen to do. You may be by yourself, husband and wife, your family, whatever that is, you're, you're listening uh, to the broadcast, the service on Facebook tonight. We're glad that you're doing that. And we wanna try to encourage you in the things of the Lord and the Word of God and strengthen you and, and help you here on Sunday night and get us equipped uh, to fight the good fight of faith and, and face this world that we live in 
with a great hope down in our hearts and our souls that we know as a child of God, whatever comes, whatever goes, and, and I pray the best for a country and, and pray the best for people around this world. I tell you, do I, I don't want to see anybody with this uh, coronavirus and folks dying from it, some 400,000 now uh, plus that we've had here in the United States. We know that maybe not all those deaths have been directly attributed to coronavirus. Some may have been where they had the virus uh, right there at the end and other uh, existing conditions already was there and they probably may not have long for this world. We understand that, but there's been a lot of folks that have died due to the virus and, and, and we just pray that with the vaccinations and if you choose to get one or you whatever, and I know there's differences of thoughts and opinions there, and there's been differences of thoughts about the virus from day one and, and all that. I, I will say this, I believe with all my heart it's real. I believe we need to do something and get something to get this out of here that we can get back to a little bit of sense of normality in our, in our world and in our country and in our society. Boy, it'd be wonderful if we could just get enough of it gone that we get back to where we have in church like we used to. I miss shaking your hand. I miss hugging a few necks every now and then and, and uh, fellowshipping one with another. And hopefully and prayerfully before long we can get back to that. So uh, you be praying about that. I, I want to use tonight as a thought, is America headed for destruction? And I'm not going to even answer that question up front. I'm just going to give you about five quick little pointers. And we're not going to be here very long tonight, but I want to share these five things with you. And I want you to stop. And when we mention each one of them and give you some scripture references, I want you to draw your own conclusion. And I, I know that we're just a part of this world. The United States of America is a part of the world. We're... When we read the Bible, we try to fit things into the Bible from what we see in the perspective of right here in America, but this is a world thing. It's, it's a, the, the, the wickedness of this world has grown uh, more so and, and wickeder and wickeder even in our generation. You think, uh, you and I, I, I'm 64 years old, some of you listening or older than I am, some of you a little younger, but uh, you think just in your lifetime how far we have spiraled downhill and away from God and away from the moral fiber and the things that this country was founded upon. You know, when, when, when they came to this country, the reason to, uh, that they came here to begin with is so that they might get into a place where they could worship God freely and openly and the way that they chose to do so and based upon but what thus saith the word of God. And you know, all of, all of the things that were drafted and put into place when this country began, a lot of it, the principles were founded right out of the word of God. I believe they felt like, you know, as long as our country remembered God, stayed upon the foundation of the Word of God, and based that as their sole rule of faith and practice, that our country would, would, would be a great nation and a great country. But boy, I tell you, if some of our founding fathers of this country and those that wrote the Declaration of Independence and those that uh, uh, wrote a lot of the uh, founding things of this country, if they could, if they could realize what, we're, what we are today as a nation, as a country, as the old saying is, they'd probably roll over the grave tonight just thinking about where we have gotten to as a country. I, I say this, God help us tonight. God help the United States of America. God help the world to this evening and the world situation that's going on. But uh, I want you to look in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter number 25 tonight. The book of 2 Chronicles, chapter number 25, and we're going to look at verse 14, 15, and 16. 
And one that I failed to mention this morning in the way of prayer request, and I don't know why I, that, that it slipped my mind. Uh, if I don't jot things down, and in fact, I said at the, home, at the house this morning, and I sat there and I jotted down people that I wanted to mention in the way of prayer request, and guess what? I got to the car, started down the road, and I said, I left the list that I just wrote down at the house. So not only do I forget things and forget people's names, I wrote them down, then forgot to bring the list with me that I had them wrote down on. So you're going to have to pray for your preacher that he'll uh, remember just a little bit better. Uh, I don't think I've got all timers, but I've probably got part timers. I, I've got some of that. I just can't remember things. I, I've got, I get to the point a lot of times, and maybe you do, you ever leave one room, go to another room, and get to that other room, and you've got that, what did I come here for? Uh, boy, that's, that's uh, that, I don't know, that might be part of the other. I, I don't know, but it, it's bad, and I've done that. I've stood there and scratched my head and think, what did I come in here to get to begin with? And stand there a little while, and, and, and I've, I've stood around in the house before, and I, most time when I'm at home, I wear a hat. Uh, outside, if we go outside, and you can see one of the reasons I have to do that, I don't have anything on top to hold the heat in, so I got to put a hat on to hold the heat in. But I've looked all over the house for my hat before, and guess where it was at? No, it's on my head. So when you're hunting something and it's on your head, uh, hunting your hat, that that's bad. I'm telling you, it is. But I forgot to mention Brother Larry Francis this morning on a broadcast, and uh, I spoke with Brother Mike just a few minutes before I, I got to the church, and uh, Brother Mike says he, he takes a few steps up, takes a few steps back. Uh, they detected that he uh, had a, a hole in his lung today. Uh, of course, he's been on a ventilator for over a week. They, they thinking that that could have caused that problem but they feel like they can correct that and get that taken care of. How they're going to do that, I, I have absolutely no, nothing to tell you on what method they use to do that. But we're still praying, and I hope you're praying. And for Larry's family, and Anita, the evening, if you're listening, I know you do a lot of times to the services here. Uh, our hearts go out to you. We're praying for you. We're lifting you up. Uh, daily to the Lord in prayer and asking God to be mindful of your physical needs. And we're just trusting God. God's going to bring Larry through this and uh, get him over it. And I believe he, I believe he's able to do that. No, he's able. It's just whether the Lord chooses to work in, in his behalf in that direction. We trust that the Lord will do that and see fit to do that. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter number 25, verse 14, it says this. Now it came to pass after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites. Now I want you to listen real close what took place here. He's just fought with the Edomites. He has won the victory. A great slaughter of the Edomites took place. And this is what it says, that he brought the gods of the children of Seir and set them up to be his gods and bowed down himself before them, and he burned incense unto them. Can you imagine that? He has just went up against the Edomites. The God of heaven has given him victory over the Edomites, and he sees something about their gods that they have been worshiping and bowing down to that he wants to bring those gods back with him, and not only did he do that, but he set them up, he bowed himself down before them, and he burned incense until those gods right there. Now listen to verse 15. Wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah, and he sent unto him a prophet which said unto him, Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people? Now listen. Which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? Why would you want a God that couldn't deliver their own people out of your hand? I have given you the victory. Now you want to take gods that have been defeated and you want to serve those gods. And it came to pass as he talked with him that the king said unto him, Art thou made of the king's counsel? 
forbear. Why shouldest thou be smitten? Then the prophet forbear and said, I know that God hath determined to destroy thee because thou hast done this and hast not hearkened unto my counsel. Now, Heavenly Father, we certainly come to you this evening in the name of the only begotten Son, your only begotten Son, that's Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that you would bless in this service this evening. I pray that, Lord, you'd reach out to the hearts of the listeners. I pray that you'd get our attention. Can we turn America around in one service right here tonight? Doubtful that we'll do that. But we can certainly get uh, to the hearts of the ones that are listening, and we can get them concerned about the America that we're living in today. And we can get them concerned enough that we get on our knees and we pray to a God in heaven and we ask God to be mindful and merciful of our land. And we ask, Lord, tonight that revival might come to the country that we live in. And I pray for our land and I pray for the place that I live in. And right here in around the Marion, Virginia area and here in the Adwolf area, and in Smith County, I pray for a great awakening, Lord, right here in our neighborhood, around among our people and among our churches. And, Lord, that it might begin to spread in such a way that, Lord, we'll, we'll get our lives tuned up and changed and get where we need to be with you. So, Lord, I see mercy in this passage of Scripture. And I see mercy in a country that we live in that's been extended by Almighty God. But there'll be a day that your mercy and that your grace will run out. And, and Lord, uh, then uh, the judgment of Almighty God is going to fall. So, Lord, we need your help tonight. And I confess that we need your help. America needs your help. And I pray, Lord, that through this few moments tonight, you might stir our thoughts, and Lord, if, if nothing else, you'll get us as your people more concerned than we've ever been before, and get us on our knees and on our faces before a righteous and a holy God, and asking you, Lord, to help us in this country that we live in today. So, Lord, meet every need, touch those that are sick, and help them bind up the brokenhearted, and we'll give you thanks and praise, Lord, for all that you do. For we ask it in Christ's name, and amen. Amaziah, here in this passage of Scripture, actually made a foolish mistake by worshiping the God of the nation that he's just conquered. And I, re I emphasize that when we read through the passage of Scripture. Can you imagine what has just taken place here? Uh, God, the God of heaven, the God of Israel, has just allowed Amaziah to go to, the, to Edom and destroy and to slaughter the Edomites. And on the way back, as they left out of there, Amaziah was so impressed and what, what there was that impressed Amaziah so about the gods that the Edomites were serving and bowing down to and worshiping, I can't imagine, I can't see that, but something appealed to Amaziah and he brought those gods back with him. The Bible said not only did he do that, but he bowed down to those gods and he burned incense to those gods and instead of worshiping the God that he gave him the victory, now he's worshiping gods that could not even deliver their own people out from under their hand. And I believe what God is saying in the passage of Scripture to Amaziah, Amaziah, how foolish can you be when you turn to some other god that could not deliver their own, his own people out from under our slaughter, and now you'd rather worship those gods than to worship the God that just gave you deliverance? Well, that's a good question to ask a man, isn't it? Well, let's get down to where we live here in America. We've got a God of heaven that has blessed this country, this nation of America, beyond measure. And one reason that I believe God has done that 
is because of our founding fathers that wrote uh, uh, the, uh, the laws and, and the Declaration of Independence and other things based solely upon what the Word of God says. And they intended for our nation as a whole. And listen, I, I, I'm sure that not every one of our founding fathers worshiped the God of heaven. They may have been some that may have not been saved, but they still realized that for a country to succeed and for America to go forward and to be a nation that would succeed and go on and on and on, we must remember that God is the one that we need to depend on and that we need to trust in. And so I, I encourage you tonight, let's, let's, let's remember that. Now, Amaziah was impressed by the accomplishments of the Edomites. And thus he worshipped the idols that they were worshipping. And verse 15, he's now serving the gods of the defeated enemy. And the Lord became angry when, king, uh, when the king brought idols back to Judah. Yet we see in this passage the mercy of God. He sent a prophet. He made one more attempt to bring his wandering nation back to him. This country, founded upon the principles of the Word of God, certainly believed that God was the Creator, that God made the planet Earth and put man here on it. God created all the other planets and the moon and the sun and the stars, so we believed in a Creator. Then we not only believed in a Creator of the universe, but we believe that God is the creator of this human race. That God made Adam out of the dust of the ground, breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and through that man became a living soul. That's how we believe man got him. Then we believe that God said that it's not good that man should be alone. I'll make a help meet for him. And he caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep, and he took a rib out of the side of Adam, and he made the woman from that rib out of the side of mine. So that's how man and women, a man and woman got here in upon the face of this earth. We believe the scriptures as they teach us that God sent his only begotten son into this world, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We believe that. So when Christ went to the cross and hung on the cross and died, uh, nailed to that cross between two common thieves. He won the victory over the devil. And so thereby the devil is a defeated foe. So if God's the one that we can serve that's, that will be on the winning side of, I believe God would ask us like he did Amaziah, why would we today want to serve a defeated foe? And Satan is a defeated foe. I want to be on the winning side, don't you? I want to be on the side of the Lord. So why would we want to serve the devil? And why would we as a nation want to look to the devil for help and for strength when we realize that the victory is in the Lord this evening? Amen. Many Americans refuse to believe that America's in danger. They say it can't happen here. Why, we're too powerful a nation. Our military is the strongest that there is in the world. And we've got, we've got more defense. We've got more strategy. We've got everything going our way. And there's not a nation in this world that can overpower the United States of America. Let me say this to you. I can show you instance after instance in the Bible when God took just a few and won the battle. Uh -huh. Countries and nations that fought, they were invincible. They were defeated by an almighty God. And listen, I, I believe this to be true. God has had his hand upon America. God has blessed America. When you let God withdraw his hand off of America 
And if we don't have God fighting for us and on our side, a little nation can come along and destroy this nation that we know of, it, of it, uh, today and the nation of America. I can show you those instances all through the Bible where it happened. I'm not a prophet. I'm not going to predict to you the future. If you want that, you can turn to some other TV evangelist on television and they'll try to give you all the prophecies and God just spoke to me and I heard this voice from God. But I'm going to tell you, I didn't sit at home. I've not heard a voice from God. I've not heard God say, now you go tell my people and you give them this. I've not heard that. But I have read enough of the Bible to know that we're probably in trouble today. America, I feel like, and I should save this for the end, but I'm going to give you where I feel America's headed for destruction. In the Bible, God speaks of destroying peoples and nations. And I want to give you five little quick thoughts here this evening. First of all, God destroys people and nations because they forget about God. Psalms 9, 17 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Now I'm going to ask you a question right here. Has America forgotten God? There was a day, and it's been in my lifetime, we've seen this happen in our lifetime. There was a day that when you went to school, there was a time set aside that a teacher, and I remember the Bible teacher, Ms. Robinson, came into the classrooms. I, I think you probably were in the fifth grade, may have been some other, may have been all the gray, I can't remember. But I remember Ms. Robinson coming in and teaching you the Bible. And she spent a good little while doing that. And then she'd have prayer with you. And she would instruct you and teach you in the things of the Lord. Now we no longer have that. We no longer are allowed to take the Bible and teach the Bible in school. We're not allowed to have prayer and pray to the God of heaven. That's not permissible. That's not allowed. Now, it's not to say that little groups cannot get together and still read the Bible and pray in school. And young person, you can do that. You can still pray. You can still read the Bible. You can still do that. As far as organized in our school system, that's not allowed today. So we booted God out of the classroom. We said, God, we don't need you. And now we have mass shootings. We have murders that take place at, at, at our schoolyards. And you could go back instances in the last few years, just in our generation, that have taken place. And you say, what's wrong with America? I'm going to tell you one thing that's wrong with America. We have tried re to replace God with something else. And what we've gotten out of it is violence today. And any time a nation forgets about God, you're going to reap the results of that choice that you've made. Not only that, but just down, what was it, in Georgia a while back? They said those Ten Commandments were in the courthouse. Said they got to come down. You can't have the Ten Commandments up there. That's offensive. It offends somebody. My goodness, when are we going to get over this offensive business? Just about anything can offend somebody. But what about the Christian that's being offended today? It offends me that we can allow things to happen like we've allowed them to happen in this country. We have replaced the Bible with violence, with murder in our schools. We've taken the Ten Commandments down. We've booted God out. We've said, God, we don't need you in America any longer. My goodness, you better get on your knees 
We ought to be praying that God would raise up some leaders and send them to Washington, D.C. that will get our nation turned back in the right direction, get us back to where we once was as a nation that relied on and trusted in God. And if we don't do that pretty soon, we're headed for destruction. Amen. Amen. God warned his people in the Old Testament. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, 12, he said, Beware lest thou forget the Lord. You, you better watch out. When you begin to forget God, you're headed for trouble. Moses was warning them not to forget God when they entered the promised land. When you become prosperous, you better not forget about God. God's been good to us. He's prospered us as a nation. You say, preacher, we're, we're not in all that good of times. I'll tell you what, we're in pretty good times. That's right. <laughs> You're in pretty good times, people. You don't know just exactly how good you really have it. You go back and read and, and study up on some that's, that's, that's gone through some rough times in this country. You study about those that went through the Great Depression when it hit here in America. My daddy was born in 1915. He lived through the Great Depression, came up through it. I remember him talking some about it. Folks, they didn't know where the next meal hardly was going to come from. They didn't have the things that you and I have today. You talking about blessed. We're blessed beyond measure. You better give thanks to Almighty God for your blessings tonight and how good God's really been to you. Makes us self-sufficient when we get things of our own and eager to acquire still more when we become prosperous. Listen, prosperity's not a bad thing. It's all right for you to have. But when it becomes you become self-sufficient and depend upon what you can do, boy, it's leading us right into trouble. I'll tell you it is. Proverbs, uh, Psalms 50, 22 says, Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver you. I still believe our deliverance and our help is in Almighty God. Amen. It's not in our military forces. It's not in how strong our military is. Thank God for our military. Thank God for our young men and women that serve in our military. And thank God for the freedom that we have because of those that have sacrificed and given their lives fighting in wars that we might have the freedom that we have today. And man, when that, when, when that pledge of allegiance is given and I stand and put my hand across my heart, I'm looking at that flag and I'm remembering those that sacrificed for the freedom that you and I have here in America today. You want to talk about something being offensive? It offends, offends me when somebody can take a knee and will not stand and will not honor the flag that's being waved high in the air, stating the fact that you and I are free because somebody sacrificed and gave their lives for you and I. Man, that's offensive to me. Thank God for that flag. Thank God for this country. You say, preacher, you think we're headed for destruction? I'm going to tell you, I believe we are if we don't get turned around. You say, do you love America? I absolutely do. I love America. I'm glad that, I, that God saw fit to place me in the United States of America. I love America, but I'm here to tell you, I do not love what America has become today. We've gone a long ways away from God. Secondly, God destroys people because they become materialistic. I, Israel was warned against materialism. Look with me if you want to in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 12. I want to read you a few verses here. Uh, just, just a little out of it. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 8 verse 12. It says this. Lest when thou hast eaten and are full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein. Look at verse 14. Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Verse number 17, And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this well. And verse number 19, And it shall be if thou do all at all 
forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. God was warning the nation of Israel. When you become so self-sufficient in yourself and you begin to say, look what we've done. Look what our hands have accomplished. God said, I'll assure you, you're going to be destroyed. I, you'll perish just as sure as you begin to do that. In times of plenty, it's easy if you're not careful to take credit for your prosperity and feel like your own hard work and your cleverness has made you rich. Folks will say this, and I've heard this all the time. I worked hard to get what I've got, and I earned it all, and I did it myself. Well, I'm going to tell you this. Thank God for hardworking people. We need more of those in America today. We need people that will get off their backside, and if they're able to work, get back to work. We don't need this stuff where that we lay at home, won't take care of our children. We allow the government to take care of our children, to take care of us, and take care of everything else. God help us. America needs to change in that perspective right there. And I'm not trying to spill you a lot of my pet peeves. I'm just telling you, the Bible said, if you won't work, neither shall ye. Now, I, I, I pray for those kids that are raised in families like that. But for that man and that woman that's able to work and will not work, withhold the food from them. The Bible said, if you get hungry enough, you'll eat. If you won't eat, let them starve to death. You say, that's, that's awful, preacher. That's bad. That's just what the Bible said. If you won't work, neither shall ye. It's God who's blessed us with abundance. And when we forget God in our abundance, the Bible said he'll remove our blessings. Let me get back to what I was talking about right there. And I got sidetracked. I chased a rabbit a little. I didn't give you all what I was saying. Folks say, well, I worked hard, preacher, and I, I earned what I've got. Bless your heart. But let me ask you this. Who gave you the strength to do the work? Who got you up every morning out of the bed? Who gave you the ability to go out there and work with your hands to get what you've got? Sure, you might have been a, a part in it, but it was God that gave you the health and the strength to get out of that bed and go to that job every day and earn that living. So it all comes back to God, doesn't it? And we've forgotten about that today. Thirdly, God destroys people because they do not obey Him. Moses speaks of those who do not obey God's Word. Back over there, and I took my marker out of it, but I'll find it right quick. Deuteronomy chapter 8 again, where we just read out of it. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. And look what he said in verse number 11. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 11. It says this. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. And not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes. Which I command you this day. God destroys people and nations. Because they fail to obey the commandments that God's given us. Bible's full of them. And we've disobeyed them. We've got people today, and they've got a name for it, that to say abortion upon a demand is, is acceptable. It's all right. God told Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, before I ever formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Say, preacher, which stand, stand do you take upon that? I believe it's wrong. I believe it's wrong. I believe it's a forgivable thing, but I believe it's wrong. And we've got into a society today that men are marrying men and women are marrying women. And we're saying it's all right. We've come a long way in America. We're not like we used to be. You better believe it. We've come a long way. We're not what we used to be. But the Bible strictly forbids that in the scripture. 
In fact, if you'll read in the book of Romans chapter 1, at the ending of that chapter, it will tell you that man has left the natural affection, the, the, the natural desires that God put into the heart of, of, of individuals and of mankind. And we've gone away from that. We've turned our own way of thinking. Men marrying men, women marrying women. Is it all right, preacher? It's condemned in the Word of God. So if God's word condemns it, I'm going to tell, stand here and tell you when we begin to practice it in America and say it's an alternate lifestyle and it's all right and it's acceptable and it, and it needs to be accepted, even in the church, God help us. It's not going to be accepted in the church as long as I'm a part of that church because the Bible forbids it. And if the Bible condemns it, it's condemned already. Amen? Amen. So God destroys people because they don't obey. And then fourthly, God destroys people because they're wicked. In the days of Noah, the Bible said in Genesis 6, 5 through 7, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord said, I'll destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. And God did this last. Noah was the only man on the face of this earth. If you read the story, the Bible said Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And he was the only one. And Noah was told to build an ark. And I don't know how many miles it was. I probably have looked at it before and just can't recall it right offhand. But he built the boat a long ways from any body of water. Long ways. And it took him 120 years to build that ark. Built it out of the gopher wood. And he'd build and work and preach and work and build and work and preach. And he kept on doing that. And people would say, Oh, you, you nut. What is the matter with you? Why in the world would you want to build something like that and build it out here on dry ground? No place to put something like that in the, in the water, into a body of water and float it. And here's what Noah said. God's going to send a rain from heaven. and He's going to destroy every living creature upon the face of this earth. And the only way out of the judgment of God is is upon the ark. And when the waters began to come and see, it had never rained. The Bible said prior to the, to the flood, God sent a, a mist up from the ground and it watered the earth. There had never been a raindrop that had ever fallen. So not only did they think Noah was an idiot building an ark on dry ground, but to talk about rain when it had never rained, they thought Noah had lost his mind. But he kept building and he kept working. And 120 years of God's mercy upon the land was extended. But one day God said, Noah, load the ark. You get them in, the clean and the unclean. You walk them up the plank into the ark and you get them into the ark. And you secure all of them in there. And you get yourself in. You get your wife in. You get your three sons in. You get their wives in. And all eight of you get in the ark. And they got in the ark. And God's mercy ran out. And the Bible didn't say Noah shut the door. Right. The Bible said God shut the door. And when God shut the door, God's mercy had run out. And a big cloud began to come overhead. And a few minutes, the clouds began to gather in from all over the place. And pretty soon, all the clouds came together. The lightning bolts began to, the, to come out of the sky. The thunder began to roar. And the rain began to fall. 
And for 40 days and 40 nights, it never let up. And it never ceased. And I can almost see the people of Noah's day sinking their fingernails into the side of that ark as the waters began to come higher and higher and higher. And that old ark began to set sail. And I can hear the pleas from those outside the ark saying, Noah, we believe now. But you can almost hear a voice from heaven saying, you believe too late. You believe too late. And the ark set sail 40 days and 40 nights. The rains came and it began to rise on the waters. And for nearly a year there, the time passed by. And the Bible said that the ark rested upon Mount Ararat. And it rested there, and Noah would open the window on the ark and send the raven out, and uh, or send the dove out, and the dove would go, and he'd come back. The dove would go, and finally the dove went, and it didn't come back, and it signified to Noah the waters were assuaged, or the waters had gone down. And it was all right for Noah to open the door, and come out of the ark. And the only thing that happened in that, the only ones that were spared, was those that trusted God and believed God. And God's mercy was upon them and spared their lives. Listen, in Noah's day, the only way of escaping the judgment of God was inside the ark. And the only way that America or any nation of this world can escape the judgment of Almighty God is to be in Christ Jesus. Amen. He's the rock of our salvation. Amen. He's our safety. Yes. The Lord preserved all them that love him, but all the wicked, the Bible says, he will destroy. In the book of Psalms, chapter 145, and verse number 20, the Bible says this, in Psalms 145, and verse number 20, and if I can get over there, let me read that verse. Psalms 145 and verse number 20, and I almost had it marked anyway. The Lord preserveth all them that love him. Well, that's just what I read to you. But all the wicked will God destroy. Do you believe the Bible? I do. The fifth thing, and I'm done, God destroys people because they become proud. God hates pride. In Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16, six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination to him, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mission of false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. You notice what was listed first? Proud love. God hates pride. God has destroyed people in his, in his word because of pride. The Bible said that the Lord will destroy the house of the proud. I'm going to give you one more verse and I'm going to close. Proverbs 6, 18 said, Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit goes before a fall. Is America headed for destruction? If we don't repent and have revival, the only thing I can say to you is, you better believe it. Is there hope? Yes. Where's the hope at, preacher? It's still in the same place it's always been. Our hope rests in God. Amen. Our hope's not in Washington, D.C. We've got a new president to be coming into office come this Wednesday, the inauguration of eight plays. Pray for peace and safety. I don't want to see anybody hurt and lives taken. What's happened's happened. We're into this new uh, uh, administration. Um, keep praying for America. Pray for our leaders. You say, preacher, I don't agree with the leadership that's coming in. God didn't tell you to agree. He just said to pray. Right. Pray that we might live peaceably. So you be praying for this president as you prayed for the last president and the one before that. And if you was doing as a Christian what God instructed you, you ought to have been praying and you'll keep praying. 
And you pray that things will go safely this coming Wednesday there in Washington when the inauguration takes place. But our hope does not lie in Washington, D.C. Our hope does not lie in any of the things of this world. Our hope and our anchor is still in the Godhead. Amen. That's our only hope. But do pray for America. Pray for America. Father, we come to you in closing tonight. We lift our country up to you in prayer. Yes, Lord. We've got a long ways from where we need to be. This didn't happen overnight. Yes. Changes have not taken place just in the last little while. It's taken place over the course of history. Yes, Lord. We've left you out a little here. We've left you out a little there. And this one's got his way and this one got their way. And pretty soon we just put God completely out of the picture. Yeah. Yeah. But thank God there's still a remnant of us. There's still a few of us like these at Adwell Free Baptist Church and a lot of our other churches, not only in Smith County, but around this state and around this country that still fear God still preach the truth of God's Word, yes, and still stand on the principles of what thus saith the yes, Word of God. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, I pray that there'll be more rock-solid churches that'll preach the truth and stand on the Word of God. And I pray that revival can come to America. Yes. I believe we're living in that space of time like Amaziah lived in where God was merciful and God sent a prophet to warn Amaziah. Yes. We're living in that merciful time right now. And God, you send in your word through preachers like me and others that'll preach the truth. And Lord, if repentance doesn't come, then destruction is inevitable. That's right. So I pray, Lord, that folks will respond tonight. And I know I can't reach the whole world, but Lord, if more will pick up the, the gauntlet and more will preach like I've tried to preach here tonight and preach where America's at right now and how we need to repent, then maybe and hopefully, prayerfully, we can get back on our knees yes. before you. Yes. So, Lord, I lift our land up to you. I love America. I really do. But I do not love what she has become. Hmm. So, God, help us. We really need your help. In Jesus' name. Yes. And amen. amen. God bless you. See you Wednesday night, 6 o'clock. Tune us in. And we'll meet with you again this coming Wednesday. May God bless you. Have a good week. And uh, if you believe that you can pray and ask God to withhold the snow next Sunday that we can meet together, well, that'd be all a good prayer too. Let's try to meet in the house of the Lord next Sunday. Look forward to seeing you. God bless you. We love you.